Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the NASCAR Heat 5 Clint Boyer season mode. We're heading on to race number 23 from Michigan. And I'm not really expecting too much out of this race. You remember how race number 15 from Michigan went. It wasn't really spectacular for me. My goal entering Michigan is to score points, you know, stage points, hopefully get a top 10 maybe, and get out of there as soon as possible. Because mainly the next race is Watkins Glen, which should be a good one for me. Anyway, point standings, 254-point gap above Martin Truex Jr., then behind Truex is Kyle Busch, Kurt Busch, Joey Logano, and Ryan Newman. The highest driver without a win in points is Kurt Busch, who currently resides 13th once you account for all the winners. Then behind him is Harvick, Hamlin, and Bowman. Currently, Byron, Reddick, Jimmy Johnson, Eric Jones, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. need points to make it into the playoffs. While Chase Elliott, the real 2020 champion, Cole Custer, Daniel Suarez, BJ, and Christopher Bell all need wins to even make it in. So anyway, let's head on to race number 23 from Michigan. All right, so here we go for qualifying. Currently, the pole time is a 38.126. I don't know. That sounds a little quick for me. And also, on this lap, I'm going to see how hot the car gets because uh, I'm very curious with how far I can push the tape because at this point, I've already forgotten race 15. All right, so here we go, starting the lap. I so much wish that NASCAR Heat felt something like NR2003 with how you can arc the car in. Because it's, I don't know, the whole handling model is just awkward in this game, and it's its just ugly. Anyway, it looks like in a single car run, oil temp only gets up to about uh, the high end of the gas after a couple laps, probably about 240. So I might be able to start with a little bit of tape, and we're starting in 15th. Not bad, but I'm more curious as to who got the pole. Truex and Kyle Busch. They're going to put up a fight all season, but so is BJ, qualifying in seventh. The Kenny Wallace of this playthrough. And Josh Balicki in 40th. And here are your top stories entering Michigan. John Hunter Nemechek is having a stellar weekend. Eric Jones just doesn't look like themself. And Martin Truex Jr. won the pole, of course. So Truex and Kyle Busch, they are my real enemies of this season. And uh, I hope for John Hunter to win because it'd just be funny. <laughs> Remember, he won two fake poles this season, Talladega and Indy. I don't know how he manages to qualify second, and every time he gets second place, somebody... Well, not somebody. The pole winner has to have a problem before the race starts, and they have to fall to the back due to a change. I just don't know how that 38 car is so lucky as to have that happen every single time. Still there. Slipstream of Kurt Busch. I see BJ down there on the bottom trying to make up some, some ground. Full throttle up to the 88. Going to draft with the 47 now. Side drafting in this game is actually genuinely fun. It's just the rest of the game that kind of makes it, well, not as fun, <laughs> put it simply. You know, when everything in the game is frustrating except for the side drafting, it kind of doesn't make the side drafting seem as cool anymore. Anyway, Chase Elliott, look at that, finally up into the top 10 in a race this season. Been having terrible luck. I think right now he's like 19th in points. Needs to get a win to make it in. Still there. Trying to make a move to the inside of both BJ and Chase. Hoping to use the draft off of Dennis. Thank By the way, Halo. SRX going to Stafford Speedway next season. Uh, I'm a big fan of the racing that happens at Stafford. Uh, it's more or less Martinsville on steroids, and I love it. I uh, I would much rather have Cup run a race at Stafford than build a short track in Fontana. Just put it into perspective. Okay, there goes the Candyman. 
All right, so who got the lead? Is that Kevin Harvick? Even though he's a teammate, I'm not sure if I want him winning a race this season. He's dangerous. But there goes Denny to the inside of Kevin. BK trying to split him, and uh, I really overdrove that corner, by the way. Definitely not doing myself any favors. And Chase Elliott checking up a little. My car is surprisingly hooking the bottom, which I'm happy about, but the AIs can obviously do it better. I mean, no matter how good your car is, the AIs will, you know, they got speed comp or something. They'll always outrun you. Look at that, three wide move by Chase. You know, I wrecked Kyle Busch here earlier in the season. Give me a minute. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I see you, game. I see you. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna pit because I w I'm hoping to pull the same strategy I pulled in uh, the first race at Michigan earlier this season when I beat everybody on pit strategy to the end of uh, stage number one. Hoping to do that again. I can't believe that timing, though. I mean, that was, that was great. You try to wreck somebody, and the caution comes out before you get done wrecking them. Still there. You know, it was just, it was too well timed. This game, the one thing it has that's comedic is timing. Look at this. I'm really able to carve through the field now, but, you All know, right, fresh clear. tires. All right, you're clear. Boy. Still there. What's, uh, what's Justin Haley doing so far up in the field? Oh, come on. Brake checking someone while they're trying to shove you past somebody. Come on. There's no sensible reason to do it. Look at Corey up here. Chase Elliott's the leader. He uh, he really needs the points. But anyway, back on the subject of the SRX. You know, I think we can all kind of sense that NASCAR has to do something really drastic to uh, survive into the next decade. And, you know, the, the hope is the next gen car will kind of save the sport in a way because they're they're kind of fighting for their life as much as they don't want to admit it you know because they're a company why would you admit it then you lose partners but uh, that's kind of what position they're in you know if, if the next gen car flops you know that that'll probably be the end I'm not sugarcoating it you know as much as I don't really want to see it that will probably mark the end of NASCAR if the next gen car is a flop but the SRX is the future now. You know, sure, it's starting out as kind of like an IROC for retirees, but that's year one. You know, imagine if NASCAR fails, right? The SRX could take on a whole new restructuring program to, to fit all the new drivers that would be, I guess you'd call them exiles from NASCAR. Because, uh, you know, the SRX, as much as it might not seem like it, they are in a very important position right now, being quite possibly the next big-time stock car league. But just like NASCAR itself, it takes time. You know, NASCAR didn't really get to the point of being well-known until 1979. Remember, they were founded in 48, December 14th, by the way. So we, uh, we were just through another NASCAR birthday r rather recently. There's my pit strategy, by the way. How you like it? <laughs> John Hunter up to second. I'm going to comfortably get to the end of the stage. 
I have very high hopes in the SRX overall. You know, they have a good model. I'm a little bit concerned about how, you know, the after effects of, of 2020 as a whole is going to affect them coming into their first season. But uh, it's a year to build up. And even knowing that, you know, the field size is a little small, I'm sure it'll be pretty entertaining, mainly due to the venues they're going to with IRP and uh, and Stafford on the schedule. By the way, did you see I just lapped Truex? I know that he's probably going to get the free pass here, yada yada, but still. It makes you feel good to lap Truex like that. I also lapped Kyle Busch, so only one of them is going to get back on the lead lap. Unless I can beat somebody back to the start-finish line and trap them both down. Oh, geez. Oh, I, I've done it. I've lapped them both, I think. Maybe. Priest, Johnson, Bell. Look at that. Well, Kyle Busch drove his way up to seventh. <laughs> BJ got a stage point. And now this is when, this is when, you know, the music starts. <laughs> because the game can't figure out who's where. Okay. It got it, it got it figured out. Kyle Busch got four stage points. Truex got a few. Kyle Busch is back on the lead lap. Truex is not. Interesting. Eh, maybe. We'll see what it does. Kyle got the free pass. That's all right. I'm hoping to work the same exact strategy in, in this stage. And, uh, by the way, because Kyle got the free pass, that means he's starting tail end. Now, Truex might be able to get back on the lead lap here. Careful, still there. Right, well, maybe? No. No, I don't think so. Just, just for safety's sake. I'm pitting so I can make it to the end. Sure, Truex and Kyle Busch are back on the lead lap. Whatever. Because they're probably going to have to pit. Maybe. I mean, since they were close already, it's probably not going to make much of a difference. Still there. Stay low, stay low. Here we go. Eric Jones Careful, getting hooked there. up. And now I'm in the top spot. I'm only hounding Denny because I don't want him getting back on the lead lap. You know, and I, I think you can understand why. It's because he's got a great car. You know, if he's already faster than me right now, don't really want him on the lead lap. I, I, I should logically let him by because... It's probably a bad idea for me to fight anyway. Look at that speed, though. Going to use some of that speed. Look at that. Kyle Busch up to second. Didn't take long, did it? Again, like I said, not really here to win the race. It'd be funny if I did. But uh, I'll say this, my uh, methods of trapping people laps down and scoring stage points so far are working. Down, down. Okay. How does this affect everybody? Obviously, you know, a couple cars stayed out, but because so few are on the lead lap, now just 10, I opted to pit. It's not like I would really lose any track position that much by coming in. 
And I now have the advantage above the guys in front of me. So that's nothing but good news. Oh, look, Kyle Bush following me through. Kyle took the top. Don't know whether or not that was good. Well, I wanted to finish what the game denied me of, of finishing earlier, but uh, then the physics kicked in right there. There we go. There we go. Got him. But uh, <laughs> I wanted to finish the spin. Anyway, we won the stage because of that. Kyle Busch only scored three points. Kind of rigging the race. But, you know, I am Clint Boyer. It's kind of my duty to rig the race. And now there's a lot of damage on the 18. So we're going to have to pit at least once in the final stage. Look at Amarola stopping up the field right there. So even if, you know, Truex or Kyle Busch wins the race, I, I got the advantage with the stage points. And that's all I really need to do. I'm more or less here to just ruin people's day, that's all. If Denny Hamlin succeeds, that doesn't really affect me all that much. Because, you know, Denny's kind of a guaranteed lock, no matter really what I do. Because of, uh, you know, just his sheer speed and the fact that he's already in the playoffs right now. What's up with this top line running right here? Keep doing that. That actually gave me the draft off the 18 on the front stretch. So look, Truex is already up to fourth, which is not good. But I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, keep fighting these guys like this. I think I've gotten my message across anyway. But at this point, I want to see how the race plays out. If I can work any kind of strategy and screw these guys over instead of just doing it off of blunt force. be kind of funny though if Kyle Busch takes the lead right here with how much damage that car has got it should not be this competitive unless uh Denny's letting him by okay not really sure how to take that one because there's so few cars on the lead lap it really doesn't matter if I pit because I'm not going to lose that many spots Look at the 38. Well, there goes the outside line. It's gone. Is that Priest making a three-wide move for the lead? Here I come. Screw all he uses. And I think Hamlin and Kyle Busch just got played like a fiddle right there. So I have 10 laps of gas remaining, 13 laps remaining in the race. <laughs> Is that Kyle Busch again? Have you not learned? Jeez. Okay, you ready for like round seven? Kyle, what you're doing, what you're doing is 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 a bad idea. Is 
It's like it's like suicide by police. It's 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 a voluntary decision. Okay, we're pitting. All right, I don't think anyone else took my strategy that I'm really battling with. So let's just pray for no yellows all the way out to the finish. Oop, the damage on the 18. Look at it. Oh, I did my job. I finally got back to him. Finally. It took long enough. Dennis, look at the, the bravery making that three wide move. If you're wondering why I've more or less gone into full screw it mode when it comes to wrecking people, like I said in the last part, if the game isn't going to play fair, why should I? You know, I'm not going to I'm not going to play within expected rules when the AIs drive so unrealistically that they can wrap the bottom going 20 miles an hour faster than I can. I will beat the game in some way, but I'm not going to beat it the way it wants to be beat. I'm going to beat it the way I want to beat it. And I bought the game, so... You know. I paid, like, twenty three ninety nine for this. Think about everything I could have bought with that money. Could have, you know, could have bought, like, some Subway sandwiches. Like, what, four Subway sandwiches? For that much money? Think about all the enjoyment that I could have got out of that instead. It's a shame that for me to run somewhat decent, I have to have a massive tire advantage. Because, you see, I'm now running kind of competent with the 11 and 19, that's because I have much fresher tires. It's just kind of a shame. And the 19's running the high side, which doesn't even make any sense. Down. Back or down. Well, that kind of ruins my strategy. So... Gee. Yep, lost nine spots. <sighs> that's because of the tape. But, you know, I got a gamble. I got to put it all on the line because that 38 car, John Hunter, is leading the field, and that might open up every opportunity in the world as Kyle's going three wide on my inside. You kidding me? Kyle, you're going to get it. Not lifting. Not lifting into here. Stay low, stay low. Until now. Look at this mess. Alright, Denny just cleared John Hunter. Three wide for second. Careful, still there. All right, you're clear. White flag. Looks like Denny Hamlin's going to lock himself in right here. All right, I made up a little bit of time on him, but it's not going to be enough. Hamlin has now become the 13th different winner of the season. I'm satisfied with a second after winning both stages. I didn't deserve any of them anyway. Here, I want to talk about this wreck that happened on lap number 32. I've been going through the, the highlights so I can get a thumbnail for this video. 
But watch this. Lap 32, Ty Dillon blows, I, I guess, the right rear tire. Probably with the way it's spun. But how's come every flat tire in this game is a right rear? You know, because they never very often, at the very least, blow the right front and head up straight towards the wall. They normally blow the right rear and spin out. But anyway, watch when the 13 car spins and makes contact with the 8. Reddick just... and just slides out of existence. Like, let me see if I can get a better camera angle of this. Alright, so just pay attention to Reddick and how he just flies away. He's gone. Disappeared. Went somewhere into the infield, through a garage stall, and he's gone. Reddick has left the building. But anyway, we finished second. Got a speed rating of 104. Denny Hamlin wins the race. I kind of screwed over Kyle Busch successfully. Only 14 cars finished on the lead lap. Dead last was William Byron. Take a look at the point gap. 1,080 points to Martin Truex Jr.'s 812. Kyle Busch still running in third spot. Uh, Denny Hamlin with his win is in sixth position now. Uh, look at that point gap, by the way, between fifth to seventh. 76, 74, 73. Really close battle right there. And now we have 13 winners on the season. The battle for last in points. Bobby Carter with a pretty clear margin above Gase and Gone, who are now tied for second to last. Kyle Busch set the fastest lap, and I did everything in my power to make him not set the fastest lap. Hamlin led the most laps. And then Eric Jones was on the move, started 35th, finished 11th. And finally, the Heartbreak Award goes to William Byron. Started 17th and finished dead last. All right, so my point gap above Martin Truex Jr. is now out to 268 points. Kyle Busch currently resides in third, then Kurt Busch, Joey Logano, Denny Hamlin, Ryan Newman, and Kevin Harvick. And as we switch back to the playoff standings with now 13 different winners, we only have three drivers who can possibly make it in without a win. Currently, the drivers who need points are Byron, Reddick, Johnson, Jones, and Chase Elliott. Elliott's running out of time with only three races left. And Ricky Stenhouse Jr. needs a win. Could get it at Daytona. Who knows? Cole Custer, Daniel Suarez, Christopher Bell, and BJ. Should I give BJ the win at Daytona? <laughs> I'm thinking about it. He deserves a playoff spot. Uh, and that would actually, you know, pad the playoffs, as I've been saying all season. Possibly a first-round elimination right there, just in case we get in trouble. So anyway, the next race is Watkins Glen, one of my favorite tracks in this game, believe it or not, uh, for race number 24. And I will see you there. And remember, have a good holiday season.